And welcome back to our live coverage and EWTN special presentation as we continue to cover the funeral services for Mother Mary Angelica. I'm Raymond Arroyo, joined once again on Mother's set here at the EWTN studios in Birmingham by Father John Tregilio and Johnette Bankovic. Thank you both for staying here and being with us. In a moment, we will take you live to the shrine of Our Lady of the Angels Monastery in Hansville, Alabama, for the vigil, service, and rosary in memory of Mother Angelica, led by Bishop Robert Baker of Birmingham. Um, I want to talk for a moment as we await the start of the procession. Uh, your thoughts watching, really, Mother's life in Fast Forward there. Um, the, the highs, the lows, uh, her grit. Her oh, yeah, she, she had uh, throxos, as they say in the <laughs> Greek, you know, chutzpah uh, in the Jewish tradition. She, she had guts, you know, and I think if more, unfortunately, if more priests, bishops, and deacons had the same kind of guts, I think uh, things would be going a lot better for us in the church. Mm. Done it. Her, her total dedication to truth. Mm. And this is what struck me as I watched. It didn't matter how it came out, whether it came out in her preaching or her mingling with the, with the crowds or whether it came out in that iconic moment in 1993, Ooh, right? Yeah. Uh, she, mother, mother was virulent for the truth because she knew that truth has a name and that name is Jesus Christ. Mm. And she would battle for truth. And for that, I think we all ought to be grateful. And I think that we all ought to seek uh, the kind of coraggio that it takes to do such a thing. Because if we need that I, uh, very real example and, and that very real witness, it is in this our day and time when truth is, is relative or non-existent at all, and where so many individuals are willing to be infatuated with and make friends with a lie. Hmm. Yeah, well, you see there um, her total dedication. I, I, I love the grit. There, there are moments where she's leaning into things, <laughs> and, you know, she's starting down a path, and you almost see it building force. Most people would, at that point, the filter goes up and you pull back. <laughs> Not her. In no. almost every case, she, she keeps plugging away. Mm -hmm. I mean, that World Youth Day video is just stunning. Oh, yeah. I mean, you watch yeah. it. It's still, it's like it's happening now when you watch it. When I saw her, uh, when we were watching the, the, the tapes of her, I was thinking, this is, must have been like what St. Catherine Siena was like mm -hmm. when she had to mm -hmm. confront the Holy Father and say, you need to go back to Rome. I don't think she was dainty about it. I think she was like Mother Angelica and said, you need to get back. Yeah, mm -hmm. Father Benedict Rochelle used to always say, uh, you think Mother Angelica's tough, you should have known Mother Teresa. He said, she was like a bulldozer in a marshmallow forest. <laughs> and I, I, you know, it does take though, when you're, what, what's, the, what's the line? The violent shall bear it away. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you need, you need a little, a little toughness to, to break through. It's, a, it's an ugly world. Well, and you know, she was willing to take it on and bear the brunt. Yes, and, and, and I think in that she imitates the one whom she loved, our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, he, he, he was one who, who uh, you know, took on uh, the, the scribes and the Pharisees and, and, and called a spade a spade. And mm -hmm. Mother walked in those footsteps. Yeah. And at a time when it was absolutely necessary, when we think about, uh, you know, where uh, that, that, that whole trend could have taken us, I think Mother encouraged people uh, and, and also, as you said, as we were watching this became a light. Mm -hmm. she, she put out a rallying cry so that many could rally around a position that needed to be taken. Yeah. Now we take you live, and thank you both for your reflections. We take you now live to Our Lady of the Angels Monastery. The procession has begun. This is the beginning of the vigil, service, and rosary in memory of Mother Mary Angelica. Bishop Robert Baker of Birmingham leads the proceedings. And we are so pleased you could join us for this intimate and critical moment for the entire family that Mother gathered all over the world. Yeah. 
may the Father of mercies, the God of all consolation, be with you. And And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. We are confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins. And so let us pray, asking God to gather Mother Angelica to himself. O God, glory of believers and life of the just, by the death and resurrection of your Son we are redeemed. Have mercy on your servant, Mother Mary Angelica, and make her worthy to share the joys of paradise. For she believed in the resurrection of the dead. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. All of us, gazing with unveiled faces on the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, as from the Lord, who is the spirit. Therefore, Since we have this ministry, through the mercy shown us, we are not discouraged. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for the sake of Jesus. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to bring to to light the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. Verbum Domini.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Then 
That very day, the first day of the week, two of the disciples of Jesus were going to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the 11 and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. There boom domini. Most Reverend Bishop Baker, Bishop Olmsted, my brother priests and deacons, distinguished guests and families, dear friends and faithful gathered here. On behalf of Mother Dolores and all the nuns, first of all, I want to uh, thank everyone for praying for Mother Angelica and for comfort and strength for our dear sisters. And I know uh, personally I've received uh, texts and emails from several priests and one bishop who promised me to offer several masses for the repose of the soul of mother. And I think I got them not too long after the public announcement of her death was made. It seems that the whole world from Rome to Philippines, to different parts of the world, to here in the United States, the whole world has been praying for Mother these past four days, especially through EWTN. She certainly deserved it, for she had done so much for us and for the church, and especially in her great contribution to the media and the evangelization effort to proclaim the eternal word of the Father, Jesus Christ, the risen Lord from the dead. Mother Dolores and the nuns want me to express their gratitude to everyone, including all the doctors, nurses, and caregivers, and all those who provide spiritual support, and even those who provide uh, security in these days our beloved Edoptian security staff who have been working closely with the sheriff and policemen of Hansville and Coleman to
to make sure all things are uh, orderly and peaceful. They are extremely grateful for your love and for your charity. They are grateful especially for offering uh, spiritual works of mercy on their behalf and, uh, and on behalf of Mother Angelica during this year of mercy. I have to admit that I'm humbled given this task to preach here at this vigil service tonight. Personally, it was overwhelming for me after Mother had died. I uh, realizing that I would be speaking to you from this pulpit this very moment. And I know there are much more deserving and holy priests, and I know there are much more eloquent and holy preachers uh, to stand in my place at this moment, and there are many spiritual sons, spiritual uh, priest sons of mother, I know a few of them are here, who would gladly take my place and give his own tributes on the life and legacy of mother this evening, much better and worthy than me. And yet God's mysterious design willed that I'd be the one for this evening. I even tried to offer it to Father Anthony before we came up here, <laughs> if he wants to take over. I, I even got an email early this week from one of those spiritual sons who's always on fire, who's always on fire to speak about Mother because of his love for her. He wrote me and told me how he checked the schedule that I would be preaching at, at the vigil tonight. And so he encouraged me to consider talking about how Mother was strong and courageous and bold and unafraid to confront error and lack of truth when there is error, when there is lack of truth. And that's true. You know, we know that about Mother. We saw her in action, especially um, at the uh, Denver World Youth Day, which was really a great turning point for her in the network, as uh, Michael Warsaw had mentioned uh, sometimes in one of the live shows this week. And certainly there are many things one can say about mother. But I thought it would be helpful, I think, if I share with you the last hours of mother's life in her room that I observed. I was not there when Father Joseph preached at the televised mass early this week but I heard he gave a very beautiful account of the last three days of mother's life. And so here I want to share with you my experience in mother's room just on that last day of her life, Easter Sunday. I have the Mass here after offering the Easter Sunday Mass in the morning. I visited mother in her room. I think it was about 6 o'clock when Father Joseph told me that she got, he got called in to see Mother. Her uh, health went down, and so we got note that we had the permission to visit Mother. And so after the Mass, I took that opportunity to be with her. I spent about an hour praying next to her with the nuns, with, with all the nurses. We prayed the Chaplet of the Divine Mercy. And, and Father John Paul came that morning, and he joined us as well for the rosary. And by that time, her condition seemed stable to me. She seemed to be at peace, because earlier in the morning, as I mentioned, Father Joseph got called in. And so after that, I decided to go back to the house. And in the afternoon, it was after 3 o'clock, somewhere, I don't remember the exact time, but it was after 3 o'clock, Father Joseph and I went back to visit Mother. When we got in the hallway to get to Mother's room, all the nurses were out in the hallway, and Mother's door was shut. And one of the nurses who opened the door for us, I noticed that she was crying. 
she had her eyes filled with tears. So my first thought was right away, did mother die already? I didn't ask, but I just kind of went with Father Joseph in. And so one of the nurses told Father Joseph to just come in, even though the door was locked. So he did. He opened the door. He, he stepped in, but then he immediately came out. Perhaps he wanted to just let them pray by themselves. But then shortly thereafter, Mother Dolores came out and invited me and, and him to enter the room. And so we entered, and they had just finished praying the chaplet out loud. Father and I got in there, and we just prayed silently and be with them and be with Mother. It was quite some time. I'd, I'd say, you know, about an hour or so, and there was things going back and forth. And one moment, Father Joseph had to step out the room for a phone call. And one time, I look at the clock next to Mother's bed. It was 4.36 in the afternoon. And I felt, I felt I need to step out. I felt I need to give them privacy. And I was considering this many times, going back and forth, bang, back and forth, about leaving, but I end up staying, and then consider leaving, and then I end up staying, going back and forth for, for quite some time interiorly. And her eyes, uh, you know, I was watching Mother breathe, basically, is what I was doing. I was watching Mother breathe. It was quite an effort for her to do that. She was... <sighs> and then while I'm seeing her breathing, I can see the upper part of her chest going up and down and then the oxygen mass, you know, filled with that uh, fog, you know, scene. And her eyes were opened. She was alert, surely. And this went on for quite some time. While her eyes were opened, there was a moment when she started looking straight up. She started looking straight up, just a bit higher than any of the sisters. She started looking up, and again, she's still breathing the same way. And not too long after that, I saw some of the nuns in front of me started to kneel on the floor. In fact, I think everyone who could end up kneeling by this time. Again, this went on for, for a few minutes. Then one of the nuns tapped on my shoulder from the back and motioned me to come out. Because I had been considering to leave the room beforehand, I gladly responded to her request. So I got up and followed her. When I came out of the room with her, she had a favor to ask me. She said, can you take a picture of me with all the nurses? And she gave me her permission to tell, me, to tell you her name. It was Sister Gabriel. <laughs> Those of you who don't know, she's the little Asian sister. <laughs> an Asian nun asking an Asian priest to take a picture. <laughs> Go figure, right? You know, that's part of the Asian charism. We are comfortable with pictures. You know, I would say, I would say less than one minute, I was outside getting ready to take the picture. I had the camera ready. And then all of a sudden, I heard another nun called out for me. Father, Father, we need you. And so I went, put the camera down and went right away back into mother's room. Once I got in, she had already died. She was no longer breathing. 
you know, remember, I was seeing how her uh, upper part of her chest was up and down and this uh, quite an effort for mother to breathe. She was no, long, no longer breathing. She was no longer looking up as I saw her before. I left the room. Her head tilted down and the room was filled with great emotion due to the loss of our beloved foundress and mother. I was stunned and I was shocked for a while that she had already died. Mother has been a real fighter. We all know that. Mother had been a real fighter. And in the morning when I visited uh, Mother, Sister Michael had whispered to me uh, quietly before I left, well, you know, the doctor and nurses have been telling us that she is in the process of dying. But mother often doesn't go by what textbook says. <laughs> and after composing myself back in that room, I started the prayers for the dead. And shortly thereafter, Father Joseph entered the room. And since he's the current chaplain, I let him take over, finish what I've started while I was assisting him. One thing I know is that mother did not want to die in her sleep. Mother did not want to die in her sleep. She, she wanted to be fully alert. She wanted to be fully awake when she died. She wanted to give her will to Jesus while being alert, while being awake, making that last choice, not for herself, but for her beloved spouse, Jesus, for God. She's heard people say that they want to die in their sleep, not mother. She wanted her will to be conformed to God's will. She wanted to make that last choice for God. She once said that God is not like social security where they take the best 10 years of your life and judge your pension by that, God does not think that way. And she so said, it's absolutely necessary as I accumulate merit and grace that my will conform to that grace of God. Because at death, your will is set. At death, your will is set. She said, I cannot make another act of will toward God. I have no choice after that. All of our life long, we're preparing for that last choice. So the height, she said, so the height of my glory is dependent upon my degree of union with God at that point. Well, she sure did not die in her sleep, I can tell you that. She was fully alert. And that's why she wanted to die being fully alert making, and making that final choice for God. One of the sisters told me after um, she was, I was asking her, I forgot how I word her the question, but I wanted to know if I miss anything, basically. And she said, no, you really didn't miss anything. Just that last moment of her last breath. She said, there was no struggle in the end, but it was a very peaceful death. We thank God for that. We thank God and we praise God for that. You know, death indeed is the reality that everyone will face. Everyone. Everyone. Death is the end of making our choices for God and or for ourselves. Death is the end of gaining merits, the end of virtues during life. And death is also the end of sin while on earth. Mother uh, referred to death as the beautiful moment of our life. 
the beautiful moment of our life. Once a person died, he is judged immediately. And based on the judgment, one will either enter into heaven through a purification or immediately. Or one goes to immediate and everlasting damnation. And this is not, this is not just a Catholic thing. This is what everyone will go through, whether one is a professed atheist, whether one is a believer, whether one is a faithful baptized, whether one is Catholics, whether one is terrorist. One will go through death and then judgment. How will we be judged? We will be judged by our love. We will be judged on how we make our choices in life, whether uh, these choices made for God or made for ourselves. We will be judged by how likeness are we to the one who created us. Here's from um, another one from Mother's Lessons on judgment. She said, when the Lord, God the Father, sees you at that beautiful moment that we call death, when you see him face to face, he will not ask you what you accomplished, what big home you lived in, what cars you drove, or how famous you were. He will say one thing to you. Were you compassionate or merciful? and understanding as I am? Were you like my son Jesus, humble and obedient and loving? We all know Mother had truly accomplished a lot for the church. We all know that. She had worked so much in evangelizing our country. She helped build EWTN, her monastery in Arendelle, and then here, this beautiful shrine. I remember when um, Sister Raphael, uh, she was mother's vicar, when she was dying, apparently our Lord had said something about mother to her. I remember this as if it was yesterday. And this was after they moved into this monastery, this shrine. Our Lord told Sister Raphael that mother's work was just beginning. And this was uh, maybe late 1999 or early 2000, I don't remember. But we all know that 2001 is when she had her stroke. And pretty much after that, she was in her room bedridden. Now we know, now we know the kind of work that our Lord was talking about. It was the work of suffering, being united with the crucified Christ. Mother had truly accomplished a lot, or rather the Lord, she would want me to correct that, the Lord has accomplished a lot through mother, his bride and his servant. God's judgment on her was not due to her accomplishments, but to how likeness she was with Jesus, with God. Her judgment was how responsive she was when God called her. And what I'm about to say, I say it with deep respect and profound love for mother and the sisters here. Mother was not perfect. Mother was not perfect. She used to teach us many times that saints were not born saints. They don't just fall off from the sky and, you know, perfectly shaped. They were not born saints, but, but by God's grace, they work with God and God make them saints. Mother had her Italian temper. Mother can get mad. She can get angry. She can yell at you with her short temper. 
I think some of us heard that one of the friars get yelled at, but I won't go into it. <laughs> she can be short in her patience. Yeah, I remember how mother wished Raymond many years in purgatory <laughs> if, if he sugarcoat her in his book. We know he didn't. He didn't because he did not want her to wish him that. <laughs> and mother, I'm not sugarcoating you either here, so don't wish me for more purgatory time after I die, please. <laughs> now, why are we here? Why are we here? We're here to pray for mother. We're here to pray for Mother, especially for any purification needed from all the weaknesses she's had in life, weaknesses that, she did, not, that did not reflect the image and likeness of God. That's why we pray for the dead. This is a great spiritual works of mercy, praying for the dead. That's what we're doing here. Again, after death comes judgment. After judgment comes Heaven or hell? What did mother say about hell? She said, she said, there is a hell, my friends. Don't let anybody tell you there isn't. Who can describe hell? Total, absolute absence of God. A place of revenge. A place of hatred for God. There's no repentance. There's no joy. There's no love. The worst part about hell is, you know, it will never, never end, and you will never see the face of the Lord. And mother said, so make your choice now. Make your choice now. Wherever you land, wherever you go, it's forever. So make it a good destination. And she also said, that the ultimate purpose of our life is to give honor and glory to God. And at the end, it will be so. And she said, you will either glorify His mercy by entering the kingdom of heaven, or you shall glorify His justice by entering the kingdom of hell. But either way, whether you know it or not, like it or not, you will glorify God, either glorifying mercy or glorifying his justice. Finally, a word about heaven from mother's own lesson. She said, heaven is, your real, is our real home. This is, our, this is our testing ground, that's all. We were created by God to be with Him. And that's why it's so important to say yes to God in everything. In everything. Mother said, let him guide you. Ask God to give you all you need to accept your way of life and to live it well. I know our Lord will bless you. He already has. Death, judgment, heaven or hell. The last things. You know, we certainly miss Mother's presence in our midst. Even Mikey misses her. Mikey is this little cat in her room. I was told that whenever Mother had to be in the hospital, Mikey tends to get anxious. I never really seen a cat being anxious, but I trust this sister's word. Mikey tends to get anxious. He would be longing for her to come back to her room. And not until she gets back that Mikey would settle in peacefully on top of a couch in mother's room. Well, I was told that Mikey has been anxious since mother died. It's like he's longing for mother to be back in her room. Perhaps the little cat need a Hail Mary or two in its own period of mourning. 
You won't hear that from a Jesuit homily or only from a Franciscan homily. <laughs> we certainly We certainly and truly miss Mother's presence. But we take comfort in her faith, her hope, and her love during her earthly life. We take great comfort. We take comfort in her earthly strive to live her motto, being totally dedicated to Jesus, totus Jesu, totally Jesus. Father Joseph preached so well last night on Mother's dedication to our Eucharistic Lord. We take comfort especially on that, especially on remembering how Mother assisted so faithfully even until the last day of her life, assisted at the breaking of the bread until the very last day of her life. Just like the two disciples who recognize our dear Lord at the breaking of the bread, likewise, Mother recognized Him. He loved, she loved Him totally. And she believed in the resurrection of the dead. She believed Jesus rose on that first Easter Sunday. It truly is a gift. It truly is a gift and a comfort for all of us, for all of us, that the Lord will to take Mother to Himself on Easter Sunday. Wow, how, how, how perfect can that be? Again, every one of us, those of you who are listening to me tonight or maybe at a different time, every one of us will go through what Mother went through, death and judgment. Whether we are Christians or Jews or Muslims or atheists or whoever we are, we're going to die. And after death, We'll have judgment. And depending on our retribution, we go to our eternal destination with God's grace, hopefully not hell. And with His grace, God willing heaven, our true and everlasting home. Again, I want to conclude with Mother's counsel, as I mentioned earlier, as a conclusion of this homily. Make your choice now. Wherever you land, wherever you go, it's forever. So make it a good destination. Let us turn to Christ Jesus with confidence and faith in the power of his cross and resurrection. Risen Lord, pattern of our life forever, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Promise and image of what we shall be, Lord, have mercy. Son of God, who came to destroy sin and death, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Word of God, who delivered us from the fear of death, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Crucified Lord, forsaken in death, raised in glory, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd, who brings rest to our souls, Give peace to Mother Mary Angelica forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, 
You bless those who mourn and are in pain. Bless Mother Angelica's community, family, and friends who gather around her today. Lord, have mercy. Brothers and sisters, our true home is heaven. Therefore, let us pray to our Heavenly Father as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death so that all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servants in their grief and to receive Mother Mary Angelica into the arms of your mercy. You alone are the Holy One, you are mercy itself. By dying, you unlock the gates of life for those who believe in you. Forgive Mother Angelica her sins and grant her a place of happiness, light, and peace in the kingdom of your glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before our praying the rosary together, I just want to join all of you who took time to be with us here today and all those who are watching tonight on EWTN to extend our deep sympathy and the promise of prayers to Mother Angelica's sisters, to Mother Dolores and all the poor Clares of Perpetual Adoration who have been on vigil with Mother for the last 10 years plus in a special way over the past week. We know the mourning and grief that they all experienced. And also, as uh, we heard Father Miguel say, the Franciscan missionaries who were close with her, and also uh, Brother David's Knights of the Eucharist. I was thinking of these sisters when the Gospel reading came out of Saint, of the, the, the final experience of St. Mary Magdalene and how she experienced a transformation as she was mourning the loss of Jesus and how her attitude toward the Lord 
was greatly changed as she experienced his presence. As Father Miguel has said, we miss Mother's presence, but now there's a new transformation that takes place in our relationship with her. She's not left us, but she's with us in a new and more glorious way. So with St. Mary Magdalene, we now enter into that experience of a transformation in that relationship that becomes much deeper and one of even greater faith in the Lord in the sense that Mother is indeed with us and that she shares her love with us and she is also praying for each one of us. Our prayers go to all her dear family and all the wider EWT and family uh, throughout the world. And I want to mention that tomorrow uh, the Papal Nuncio will be here, Archbishop Vigano. He will share a message from our Holy Father, who is also with us in prayer. for the repose of the soul of Mother Angelica and for strength and comfort for our dear sisters and all those who mourn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. For persecuted Christians and the enemies of the church and their conversion, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For greater faith, hope, and love. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The first uh, glorious mystery is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus from the dead. The joy of your resurrection fills my soul with exaltation and the realization that my body too will rise someday. Like your five wounds, my suffering will also shine for all to see. The wisdom of the Father will be glorified forever as all men see how his plan and will in my life marked out the glory that would be mine for all eternity. All the trials, sufferings, heartaches, and disappointments will seem as nothing compared to the glory your sufferings merited for me. They shall all seem like a dream, and the vision of your face will fill my soul with exquisite joy. I will roam freely in the love of the Spirit forever and ever.
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most need of thy mercy. The meditations you're hearing here are Mother Angelica's her, oh own meditations on these glorious mysteries. May she rest in peace. Ave, 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 Maria. Ave, 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 Maria. The second glorious mystery is the ascension of our Lord into heaven. Dear Jesus, I find the day you ascended to the Father a sad day. It resembles my soul when after experiencing your presence, it is plunged into a state of dryness. Like the apostles, I tend to stand still and look up in the hope that I will once again experience the joy of your presence. This dryness of soul is something I must work with and not against. Help me to realize that when I feel your presence, you are consoling me. But when I do not feel that presence, and I continue a life of love and virtue, I am consoling you. I want to rise above the demands of my emotions and have the courage to live in spirit and truth. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. The third glorious mystery is the descent of the Holy Spirit upon Our Lady and the Apostles in the upper room. Mary and the disciples were locked in the upper room, praying in a spirit of expectation. And the Spirit of the Lord came in the form of fire over the heads of each one. At that moment, timid men became strong. Fearful men became courageous. Ignorant men became enlightened. And simple men became powerful. Men who lacked the courage to defend their Lord ran out into the streets and proclaimed his name. Holy Spirit, give me an increase of your gifts. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, <clears throat> 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need thy mercy. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. The fourth glorious mystery is the assumption of our Blessed Mother into heaven, body, and soul. Mary, my Queen and Mother, I rejoice that your pure body, the Ark of the Covenant before his birth, and a temple of the Lord as resurrection, rose from death in anticipation of the general resurrection. It is a comfort to know that you are in heaven as my mother, with all the love and concern your dignity demands. You know the dangers of this life. You know the temptations of the enemy. You know the weaknesses of the flesh. Help me to withstand these dangers until Jesus calls me to himself. I want my love and zeal to endure any pain and make any sacrifice. Let me rise above the things of this world so my thoughts may be with you in heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, it all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. fifth glorious mystery is the coronation of our Blessed Mother as Queen of Heaven and Earth. On earth you were the unknown and unheralded Mother of Jesus. Your humility astonished the angels and confused the proud demons. It is truly just that now your greatness be manifested to all God's children. Your one desire is to lead us to Jesus, and your one prayer is for our salvation. I am grateful for your care and sorry for my negligence. Your coronation gives me assurance that one day I too shall be crowned with glory. God will wipe away every tear from my eyes and bestow upon me the light of glory. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need thy mercy. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. We pray for our Holy Father and his intentions and to gain the indulgence for praying the rosary together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. you to join us tomorrow, Friday, April 1st at 1130 a.m. Eastern Time for the funeral mass for dear Reverend Mother Angelica. It'll be celebrated by Archbishop Charles Chaput of Philadelphia. Go to EWTN.com for the air times and the re-airs in your area. And I want to thank Doug Keck, Father John Tregilio, and Janet Bankovic for joining me earlier this evening. And we want to thank you, our EWTN family, for being here for this most important occasion. On behalf of the staff and crew of EWTN News, I'm Raymond Arroyo. Thank you for watching. May Mother Mary Angelica rest in peace.